everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady. Happy first day of April. Now I am not fooling when I talk about soil temperature. And so today I wanted to do a quick tutorial on how to use a, a soil thermometer and how to understand the seasonal timing of getting plants in the ground based off of this really important information. Now I know most people probably don't have a soil thermometer, however they do exist. You can find them online. I bought mine from Fifth Season Gardening. See, it kind of looks like a meat thermometer. It just has this long probe and then a digital readout. And um, actually on the back of this, this is, this is one from Rapid, what is this? Rapid Test Digital. Um, it actually gives you information on the ideal soil temperatures for transplanting. So it gives you all the information that you really need. So for example, um, with tomatoes, their ideal germination um, is 80 degrees. Now they'll germinate between 50 and 100 degrees. Um, for transplanting seedlings in the ground, it needs to be at least 60 degrees. This is soil temperature. Um, so right now, nowhere in my yard is the soil temperature at 60 degrees. It's simply been too cold. Um, and I would suspect this is the case for most parts of the southeast, um, at least zone it's seven, colder, but I would even suspect into zone eight. Um, so the process for testing your soil temperature is really easy. What I recommend is, you know, going around to different parts of your garden and, you know, literally you're just gonna stick this in the ground and you're gonna wait about a minute. And you'll actually see the numbers like go down because right now the air temperature is like 70 degrees. But once I put it in the soil, it, you know, the, the temperature marks go down significantly. So let me show you this in action. Okay, so let's test these um, cell packs here where the broccoli that we sowed last week is just germinated. Okay, so you see the reading is 71. That's the air temperature. You're gonna stick this probe in. Now, ideally you would stick it in deeper than that. This is showing still 71 degrees because you know these are cell packs. They are sitting on brick. This gets Western sun. So this soil is actually the same temperature as the air which is precisely why the seedlings are growing so rapidly in it. Okay, here in the same area, let's test one of these pots that's been out all winter. See if the soil temperature is any different here. Stick that in nice and deep. So you can see it's going down by a little, a few degrees. deeper the pot, the colder the soil will be. You can see these pots are like about a three gallon, maybe a five gallon size. And they have been out all winter. They never, I never brought them in at all. So now the temperature has gone down to 66, which is perfect. You know, this is a, a zone bendy area. And of course this is agapanthus, which is kind of marginally hardy in the ground in my area, not so much because of temperature, but because of winter wetness. That's why I grow it in pots. So here we are, the temperature's gone down to 65. And that seems about accurate. Okay, let's test the soil here in the soil cube bags filled with poppies. This is sort of on the north side of a south facing fence doesn't get a lot of full sun at this time of year. It's starting to get more sun. And there that says 66, 65. So you can see there's a few degrees difference depending on your exposure, but your containers are definitely going to be warmer than in ground. But let's put that to the test and do some in-ground testing. All right, so we'll keep it adjacent. We'll go to this bed here, and you can see there's Escholtia or California poppies germinating. These are leeks that have been planted in the ground about a year. I'm just gonna put that there. 
and this part of the bed gets pretty good sunlight. I'm gonna be sh okay, it's going down. I was like, I'm gonna be shocked if it actually is 65 degrees in the ground. That doesn't seem possible. Okay, it's going down, we're at 62. If I had done this a week ago, or really two weeks ago, which was my original plan, um, I, the soil temperature would have probably been more like 48. Um, see, it keeps, it keeps going down. This is why you have to wait about a minute in each spot. Okay, so let's do an area that's full sun, never ever in the shade. This, this feed tank bed is the perfect spot. Let's see what the soil temperature is here. So I would imagine that it would be a bit warmer. As you can see, the soil temperature here is only 62 degrees. So not the right temperature for planting tomatoes yet. Well, I'm curious to see what these planters out here in the driveway and the wall, to see what those temperatures are. So let's put it in. You know, out here in full sun, with concrete surrounding, that these soil temperatures would be much higher. They're still not the right temperature for tomatoes. However, we're looking at 65 degrees here in this pot. I was just thinking of the irony of this being called a rapid test, because, you know, in COVID times, that has a completely different meaning. <laughs> not regarding soil temperature at all. But you can see here in the wall that is gloriously filled with barley that is just starting to flower, that the temperature is actually lower. It's 62 degrees. And finally, let's do the big bed out front where all these cool season flowers are doing so well. And this is also a full sun space. I can't believe how fast like the, the centuria or the bachelor buttons have grown. And it's everything to do with day length, um, but also soil temperature. So the soil is warming considerably and it is showing at 62 degrees. So obviously I am endlessly entertained by checking my soil temperatures around the garden. And it's something that I learned to do about 20 years ago when I first moved to North Carolina because it really can give you important data to better understand your ideal transplant times. Because literally what I do here in South Raleigh, Fuquay Verena, where I live, is gonna be different compared to North Raleigh, say Wake Forest because there's a considerable difference in, you know, even just 30 to 40 miles apart. And so that's why having one of these on hand, I think is really a good idea because it will give you the specific information that you need for all the different microclimates in your own garden. So for $20, you can get this amazing tool that will really help guide you in your seasonal planting. I think it's really important to first look at the ideal germination temperature and then look at the transplanting seedlings out temperature and you know what you'll notice here is the cool season crops like broccoli, cabbage like cooler soil versus cantaloupe 65 degrees. Now though I have temperatures in containers at 65 degrees I wouldn't want to do cantaloupes yet because we still might have frost. Our average last frost date is April 15th, and we have had hard frost much later in April than that. So this is why I really want to encourage you to stop skipping spring, lean into another round of cool season vegetables, because they're going to match up with your soil temperature rate, and wait until really like the middle of May in zone 7 to get started on your warm season vegetables because they're gonna grow so much faster. There's literally no advantage to you planting tomatoes in cold soil. They will not grow. And I've done this experiment in years past where I planted tomatoes out in April, then I did them every two weeks. And my most productive and healthy plants were those that got planted actually in late May into June 
because they never went through a time where they sat and sulked because of you know cold cold soils and you know cold rains through the month of April that we frequently get here in the southeast. So again, this is really a, a super simple way to just better evaluate the realistic conditions that are existing in your garden so that you can make better decisions about your, you know, not only your crop rotations, but actually the timing of what you plant when. Well, I hope you found this video to be helpful. Please give me a like, share it with your friends, spread the good word about not skipping spring. And I thank you all so much for watching. Happy April, everybody.